So let me show you here what this is all about. This is a final script, which is a cluster, and I've organized it. So you have all the inputs and outputs here within this cluster. Then you can bake the objects. But let me show you um, why this is going to be a great example for some of you. If you're into fabrication, this cluster in this script is going to incorporate all of the aspects that you think of in fabrication. Like here, we have these sides that interlock, but we also have the tolerance. The tolerance is going to be, depending if you're 3D printing, if you're laser cutting, this will actually space out some of the joiner here and make it a lot easier for you to put together. Sometimes when you have the objects be exactly the same size, you'll have some issues where maybe one of these will break and you'll have some issues. So let's go over some of the things and some of the really cool things that this script has. And you'll also be able to download this on my website temporarily. But what I would like to know is if you have any questions or if you have any ideas as to how to push this further. So with that being said, let me show you some of the really cool things about this and how it's perfectly organized for those of you that want to get into fabrication. So the idea is that when you go to this cluster, in here, we've organized the inputs and outputs. This way you don't have to worry about the steps that are going on in the background. The way to see all the steps is you can hover here and you can see the entire script within this cluster, or we can double click in here and see how the entire script is organized from the inputs to the outputs. And you can even add and see how this whole thing was made. So let's save it. Now here we'll see that we can change the size in the X direction. So let's go here to, let's say change the Y size to 100. So every time you change it, you'll see the dimensions change here. So you have a visual of the entire design. Then we can change the height. So all of these are important sliders that will change the design. Then if we go here to the depth of the joinery, or, or this is called a finger depth or a finger joinery, which here, as you can see, we can decrease the size and we can change how many we have in the Z direction. So if we only have three here, we can add four. And if in the X direction we have four this way, well, we can make it symmetrical. So it has the same amount on every side. So let's change this a little bit. And notice that all of these joints are actually changed at the same time to the same value. Now that's something that we program into this cluster, but we could also bring some of those inputs out and have it vary for the X, Y, and Z. So with that being said, let's move into the rest of the script. So we have here at the beginning, a little bit of how you can use the script. You start by picking the size, the tolerance, check the dimensions, and then you can bake the object. So I have it here so you can use it and you can see how you can follow the steps here and at the end come out with a perfect box then once you move into this last portion here this is where we can check our dimensions as you can see we've created this diagram here on the side that we can space and move here and we can also see the dimensions of all of the intersecting portion. So we see that there's a 0 0.5, 5.5, 5 .5, and then 5.12. And that's going to be the tolerance difference. And we can change the spacing here. So you see how it comes together. And this is more of a visual double check before you go to the end here, select these middle click, bake, now we can actually take this entire object and fabricate it. So I'll move it here to the side and you'll see that everything 
is perfectly aligned. And all we have to do is move around some sliders and come up with our design. This is perfect for those of you who are into fabrication, but also furniture design um, and things like this. So if you have any questions or ideas for future videos or future designs, let me know in the comments below. I want to be able to address those for you guys and create more tutorials that will help you understand how to use Grasshopper. So thank you very much for being here and I hope to see you on the next video. So here at the end, I want to show you one last thing, which is how we arrived at this specific script. So this is going to be the cluster one, but I want to show you from the beginning where we started. First of all, this was a question that I had from one of the people that purchased a product on my website. They asked me if I could add on to it because the script that they purchased had the base plate, but it was not interlocking. So that is where we started on the first script. So let's open it up. Let me show you how many iterations we've gone through. We start with this first one and the beginning was this which is the entire box with the joinery here, but it doesn't have the base. So that's the beginning portion. And as you can see, it's a pretty practical and pretty straightforward script here. But as we add on, we can add more details. So you start with the basics and the general, and then we can add more details as like this. So on the second one, we already have the joinery on every single side the spacing it's a little bit different so that that's one of the things that i wanted to do is make sure that i have everything organized so as we move on to the third one i was also getting more feedback because i wanted to make sure that this was a script that uh, the person that purchased the script could use for laser cutting and fabrication so now here we have things a little bit more organized with everything labeled but we don't yet have the dimensions so that's one of the things that i moved into is going from the third to the fourth here we have it a little bit more cleaned up and i also added actually this one doesn't have the dimensions but it does have the ability to place a rectangle any rectangle and create the script from it and that's a capability that i can also add to the other one is not necessarily just plugging in an X and Y size, but saying, hey, use this rectangle as my base geometry. Let's move on to the next one. This and this one, I think we just organized things a little bit more. Let's see if we, and we'll see the change over time here, so. Let's move on to five, just go to seven. Here we already have all of the steps, mostly organized everything here. So little by little, we add more details. Why? Because we want to not just have the box, but we want to have a visual representation of the size. Why? Because some people may not want to look at the script to look at the number. Some you may want to use in a, in a presentation and so you'll pull this up and you can show, okay, this is the exact dimensions that we'll be using. So if everything looks good, then let's go ahead and, and finish it off. So at the end, we end with this, with the cluster. So this is the first cluster. And then I cleaned it up a little bit more to end with our final one here. So like I'd said, other things could be added. This is just the master cluster that creates this box joint uh, box. So wanted to share with you from the beginning to the end, how we got here. 